So I found this pretty cool post on my Discord server. You can see the links below. First coding interview, what happens? Somebody posted it there, and I thought I'd read out part of it, what he wrote. It would be very instructional for everybody out there. So he writes, well, it happened. I had my first dev interview today. Man was not expecting three people all there to interview me on a Zoom call. And he continues, apparently whoever recently quit was a pain to work with and they wanted to make sure I wasn't going to go into a rage when they applied a lot of pressure. Isn't that interesting, right? They, according to this guy, and I know this stuff, this type of stuff is not uncommon, they set up the interview to see how the this dude would react emotionally with regards to uh, you know, being under pressure. Why is this relevant? The number two thing that recruiters look for when they are interviewing candidates is whether they have good interpersonal, good social skills, uh, easy to get along with, right? Because as I learned from one of my mentors decades ago, he said, I'd rather have, I'd rather have somebody who's moderately skilled technically but has good soft skills I'd rather have this person over someone who was a genius at their technical skills, a genius coder, a genius at the actual nuts and bolts of the work, but who was a jerk off. You don't want to work with people who have uh, terrible uh, dispositions, right? You, if somebody is a genius, but you can't communicate with them, they're hard to work with, they're just terrible. You don't want them around you. So as I tell people, and, as, and that's why I put out my course on, on this whole thing called Lizard Wizard, links below, you have to realize that if you're going to go work with people, you have to have good social skills. You have, to good, you have to have good soft skills. You have to be reasonable with people. You have to have a bit of a thick skin, be able to take criticism and not let it get to you. You have to be empathic, empathetic, I think is the word, towards other people. You gotta be a nice person. If you are that, that's half the battle. So anyway, so he says, yeah, they set up the whole interview to test, see whether he could handle pressure because they didn't want another maniac. So he continues, several times in the interview, they asked sort of weird, logical, mathematical questions just to see if I would get irritated. Honestly, after 70 minutes of asking me about all kinds of concepts about a wide variety of languages that they knew I hadn't learned, so they purposefully asked him questions about languages he never worked with, <laughs> I was pretty tempted to get irritated. But, he said, good for him, by the way, he kept his cool and made sure to ask him some questions in response. See, that's one thing I always tell people. When you go into an interview, be prepared, study the company, find out what they're doing, find out what their business goals are, find out the technology they use. So this way, when you go in there, you can put questions to them. When I see somebody who comes in with a nice, even level temper, meaning relaxed, cool, collective individual, somebody who can uh, take pressure, somebody who can control, control themselves, who can communicate well, that's a big plus for me. And number two, and when they come back to me and ask me questions about what we're doing, why we're making certain technology choices, and it seems they have an interest in what we're doing internally, that's a huge plus as well, right? Because it shows somebody who's got some interests, somebody who's willing to uh, not be led by the nose like a, like a cow, somebody who can actually think on their toes, so that's good. Anyway, he continues, really just happy to have gotten that first interview out of the way with a good company. Yeah, exactly. The interview process has to be something you have to work at just like you worked at learning how to code. There's this idea that people have is that once you learn how to code, then the interview should be like second thought. Meh. No, it's part of the game. It's the last stage of becoming a professional developer before you get your first job is to understand how to prep for the interview, how to create your resume, how to conduct yourself, follow up afterwards, act in a professional way. Again, let me emphasize, 
being able to act in a professional, calm way, to be able to communicate well, to have good social skills, soft skills, is a huge part about being a professional developer. He continues, I know the economy is weird, at least in my city, so not a lot of junior dev opportunities right now. So as I'm recording this, it's uh, November 2022. Uh, the layoffs are starting to happen in the tech industry. It's normal when people are nervous, companies are cautious about doing certain things. I wouldn't be too worried about it long term. I've talked about this in other videos, so, you know, you got to just roll with the punches a little bit and you'll be fine. Anyway, he says, I took three months to land that one interview. Won't hear back for one to two weeks. If I somehow do not do get it, I might write an article about it because there were so many interesting weird things about the whole experience. So yeah, that'd be good if he writes the article. Again, this is a post on my Discord. You can find the link below. You're free to access it. A lot of good people there. Just to recap, he said he took three months to land that one interview. Yeah. When you are first getting into the job market as a developer, in normal times, there are uh, there is an expectation that you will have to uh, pound the pavement a little bit, knock on some doors. You may have to go through many, many interviews and get rejections until you finally land that first job. Once you get that first job, though, once you get that first year or two of experience under your belt, then everything becomes much easier much easier so now in late 2022 potential re we're probably in a recession uh, people are starting to tighten their belts if you will in terms of companies that's okay just keep doing what you're doing keep refining your interpersonal skills your coding skills go out there look for small projects to build uh, build up your resume keep applying for jobs just keep at it keep at it don't worry the cream rises to the top you'll be fine. It may take just a little bit longer now because, you know, it's just time. Again, if you followed my uh, my advice way back where I talked about FU money, this is where FU money becomes super important. If you don't know, FU money is FU money. It's money that you have for an emergency. It's not retirement money. It's not money to go pay for uh, Xbox. It's not money. It's emergency money. And it covers... I say three to six months minimum. I used to say one to two years. Depends on the circumstances. Now we're going into a potential slowdown or recession in the economy. I would say try to increase your FU money to a year or so. So that all your expenses are covered for a year. Let me tell you, when you cover all your expenses, when you have enough cash in the bank to cover all your expenses for a year, everything. You sleep well at night. 